over to the first book of Kings, chapter 20. You don't have to go there. It's one verse. I'm just going to read it. Chapter 20, verse 11. And the king of Israel answered and said, Tell him, let not him that girdeth on his harness boast himself as he that putteth it off. I want to talk to you for a few minutes today from the subject bragging rights. You know those people who've been through enough in their life, they got something to say. They done been through enough tests and trials and passed enough tests. You can be seated, I hear you. They done been through enough in their life that they can now say something about life. Bragging rights. Somebody shout bragging rights. It's amazing to me how people think that they know you. They think they've got you figured out. They have looked at all of the circumstances and they, they look at what you're driving right now, where you're living right now, and what you're doing right now, and what your status is, and they think that just because you're there now that you will always be there. But they fail to calculate God working behind the scenes and setting you up for real breakthrough in your life. And to give you a real experience with him, they fail to calculate that. They, they, they think they've got you figured out and uh, all of the circumstances that you've been through in the natural, I can see why most people would have never dreamed I would be at West Angeles preaching on this platform or singing on this platform. I understand they had every reason to believe that. I gave them all the reason in the world to believe it. But what they didn't understand that God was setting me up he was setting up my future. He was setting me up to come here and encourage somebody that's going through a difficult season in their life to let you know that just because it's like this right now don't mean it's always going to be this way. Don't get it twisted, honey. My God can do something in them. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. You know you, you know you have some critics and people said you'd never make it to where you are right now, but God made a way out of nowhere. You know good and well you're a testimony. You know you, you wasn't always cleaned up like you are right now. It's the reason why I tell my testimony so much is because I realize that ministry emerges from the journey, not the destination. I'm going to say that one more again over here. I'm from Mississippi originally, so I'll use some kind of vernacular to know that y'all may or may not understand, so just ride with me. They look at what's happening right now in your life, and they think that that's what's going to always happen. I like to look at these people as trendy people, people who just follow trends. If you're hot today, then they're going to follow you, but the first day you fall down, they're gone. People who hang out with you because they have an agenda. Be careful about too many yes people being around you. You can't have accountability in any kind of person that's always got an agenda for hanging out with you. I like to call them hitchhikers. Spiritual hitchhikers. They're not going to pray like you pray. They're not going to fast like you fast. They're not going to tithe like you tithe. They're not going to be committed like you're committed. They're not going to be faithful to the house of God like you are, but they'll sure enough ride on your coattail. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Some of you got something sitting at your house, writing on your recliner, drinking your milk and watching your TV. You can't even watch your own special show anymore because they sitting up there running your remote. Sometimes you got to tell them, say, baby, you got to get out. You got, and it's easy to get them in there, but when they get in there, it's hard to get them out. I've had a few hitchhikers sleep on my couch one night. They, all, they said all they needed is one night. A year later, they still sleep. I, I finally, I said, listen, if you don't get out of here, I'm calling the cops. And if you don't get out then, I'm going to get my shotgun out. Riding on what you have labored for, what you've worked for. These kind of people, they just live in the moment and they never experience depth in their life. Hitchhikers, coattail riders, living in the moment, no longevity, emotionally driven, never purpose driven. 
Be careful about being emotionally driven. You got to live your life with purpose. And sometimes you got to let that person know or those people know, I'm not mad at you. I don't think I'm better than you, but I got to move. I'm not trying to be arrogant, but there's some people in my life I just had to discard because they weren't helping me get to where I need to go. Come on, somebody, you know what I'm talking about. Some of you know you got them in your life right now. You just need to go ahead and boot them out, serve them eviction notice, say, I love you, but you got to go. They think they got you figured out, sum you up by what you're going through. And this is a time that you have to really redefine yourself because they thought they knew you, but you have to show them you really don't know me like you think you know me. There's some good stuff down on the inside of me. My giant's just sleeping right now, but at some point in time, God's going to breathe on that thing, and when he breathes on it, that giant's going to stand up inside of me. So don't get it twisted and think because I'm down right now that I'm always going to be down. There's going to come a season in my life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. I dare you to give God 30 seconds of praise because joy is about to hit your house. Joy is about to hit your marriage. Joy is about to hit your finances. Joy's about to hit your house in such a way that you ain't even going to answer. It's going to sideswipe you. It could just like going through an intersection and somebody run a red light. You're going to be walking, doing your own thing, and then all of a sudden favor's going to hit you. Blessings are going to hit you. Deliverance going to hit your house. So unlike Christ, and you find in this text that Jesus makes a major statement because he has to reprogram their perception of him. They question his status and his quality of being a king because he rode in on a donkey. Because most people who did exploits rode on stallions. Beautiful horses. You know them people that show up in your life and they want to show you their resume, their credentials. They want to tell you everything they've qualified themselves to do. But Jesus said, you know what? I'm going I'm to do it a little different. And he climbs up on a, the colt of a donkey. Why would he choose not only a donkey, which was in the scripture an unclean animal, I hope y'all ready for some preaching because I feel my help coming on now. He rode in on that colt and just rode in with swag. If I could see, I'd love, if I see him in my mind's eye right now, I can imagine he, didn't, he wasn't worried about nothing. You ever notice that after you've been through some stuff in your life, you don't let people bother you no more? The people who used to bother you and get on your nerves all the time, you get a little age on you and get a little experience. You don't worry. I got plenty enough energy to put somewhere else. I ain't worried about you. If you can't figure me out, then go on somewhere else. I'll quit hanging out with people that will never make up their minds about you. Quit hanging out with people just because you're afraid to be solo. I've learned in this season of my life that it's time to ride it out solo. Look at somebody say, ride it out. You got to be strong to ride solo. You got to be strong. You got to be able to encourage yourself in the midnight shift. Like David said, I encourage myself in the Lord. I don't need nobody to pat me on the back. I know how to encourage. I done been in a jail cell sitting up there in solitaire and had to encourage myself and walk the floor and pray and declare and prophesy over my own life. You got to learn how to prophesy over your own life. You got to be able to resuscitate your own life. You got to be able to let the devil know, don't come in my house no more. Don't traffic in and out of my marriage anymore. Don't traffic in and out of my kids no more get out of my finances I'm serving you eviction notice you got to go I wish you'd just tell the devil right now you got to go I don't know where you're going but you can't stay here you got to have some interdependence about you now let me tell you something it's 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 hard to understand encouragement unless you understand discouragement 
See, so if you ain't ever been there, you don't really understand what real encouragement is. But let me give you a definition of discouragement. Discouragement means that you have lost the ability to control fear in your life. Sometimes you gotta grab a hold of yourselves and pull yourselves up by the bootstraps and look in the mirror and talk to yourself. Sometimes I get up in the mirror, I talk about, boy, you're looking good today, son. I don't know what you're doing, but keep on doing it. You're doing it well. <laughs> Jesus rode in there on that donkey, and they didn't understand why in the world that he was doing that if he was a king. But the thing about it is, is Jesus knew he was a king before they knew he was a king. See, when you understand your calling and your mandate and your purpose in life, you don't let people tell you what you can and cannot do. I told somebody the other day, I said, quit telling me what I can't do. I've had enough can't do's in my life. Tell me what I can do. What's wrong with people who don't know how to encourage their brother or get happy when somebody gets just a blessing in their life? I don't know what's wrong with people that get mad because everybody else is getting blessed but them. It's amazing to me because I believe that Christ was making a statement when he rode in on an unclean donkey. It was his way of letting everybody know that I can do a whole lot with just a little bit. Aren't you glad that God, did, he, he looked past your faults and just saw your needs? That, that, I mean, that's that, just that right there that he didn't pass you by and move on to the popular one or the one that had the more qualities or the, had been qualified. Isn't it wonderful to know that he don't change on you? He doesn't have to learn to love you. He's in love with you. He knows that he's got every hair on your head number. The angel said, what is man that they are so mindful of him? He loves me. I can't help that he keeps on opening up doors for me and has favored my life. You know what? You can either quit being ashamed of your blessings and start working that swagger out. Get your favor back and get your swagger back. Hold your head up. I don't care what you've been through. I don't care what you're facing right now. I'm a living witness. You can get your swagger back. You can get your joy back. You can get your peace back. Is there anybody in here that wants your stuff back? If you do, let the devil know I'm coming to get my stuff. I'm going into the enemy's camp and I'm taking back everything. Give me back my joy. Give me back my peace. Give me back my kids. I want it all back. And when you bring it back, put it back where you got it from. <laughs> Letting them know, he said, listen, I can do anything with nothing. I'm so glad he didn't pass me up. I gave him every reason in the world to pass me up, but thank God he saw something down on the inside of me. You know what I'm talking about. Any witness in here, you can join in with me and understand and know that God did not pass you by. He stood right by you and he pulled greatness up out of you. Come on, somebody. You know he did it. He pulled greatness out of you. When people gave up on you, when people walked away, he just stood right by you. He ain't sweating that thing. It's great to know that he doesn't love us just when we on the up. I'm a living witness. I know I'm persuaded that many times when I was sitting in those jail cells, strung out on dope, that he would dispatch angels to sit in that hotel with me to keep my heart from blowing up. I used to snort so much dope, my chest would feel like it was going to explode. You can't tell me that God wasn't in the middle of that thing. You can't tell me that the blood wasn't working. He loved me yet when I was in my trespasses. That's, a, that's somebody that you need to hold on to right there. That's why when, the God, when God does something for you, you ought to open up your mouth and praise him. I mean, let him know, God, I know you did not have to do this for me. I'm just grateful. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for holding on to me. Thank you for keeping me. Thank you for preserving me. Thank you for appointing me. Oh, I wish I had somebody in here right now. Shonda. I love it because Christ did not forget his humble beginnings. 
Be careful that you don't suffer from amnesia when you get cleaned up. I love it because he made a statement. He says, I'm making a statement to mankind. First of all, I ain't got to have all your stuff. Secondly, I come to heal, to restore, to deliver. And because he was rooted and he understood his humble beginnings, he could ride in on any kind of vehicle he wanted to ride on in. Be careful that you don't curse the vehicle that God had designed to take you to the next glory in. I told him earlier, some of us want him to show up in a Benz or a Bentley, but sometimes he'll show up with a Pinto with hubcaps. And if he shows up, you ought to be glad he just showed up. Get in, sit down, buckle up and shut up and ride. Look at somebody say, just ride it out. Well, I don't know what kind of vehicle you're working with, but ride it out. I don't know what you're working with, but ride it out. I don't know what you're riding in right now, but ride it out. Because we got to move. We got places to go. We got people to see. We got things to do. I don't know about you, but I'll ride in anything if it's God's in it. That's all I need to know is God ride with Because if he's riding with me, I get in and ride. It's amazing how we'll get confused when God shows up in something that we don't want to ride in. But just remember back in the day what you used to ride in when you was out there living in sin. I didn't care how I got to the dope house. I just wanted to get there. I'd ride my bicycle if I had to. What concerns me, and I ask God, when God began to do things in my life about 10 years ago and started giving me a ministry and giving me something to say and something to sing about, I asked God, I said, God, don't ever let me get intoxicated on my success. We got so many people out here today and they bring a reproach on the kingdom of God because they get intoxicated on their success. All it takes, they ain't even done nothing big. They just got a small platform and now they done changed their mind about everything. You can't even have a conversation with them no more. I was somewhere in the last 24 hours and I just couldn't believe myself. I just said, oh Lord, I don't know why they would think that they're that great. They're not really that great. Is they got, I mean, I know they got an award, but come on now. It doesn't change everything about you. You walking around like you don't know nobody. Know nobody. I said, I just I wanted to shake the hand. I said, no, nah, well. <laughs> just keep it moving. You know what? I found out that I don't want people infatuated with me. I want people who are called to me. <laughs> it's all good. Look at somebody say, it's all good. <laughs> hey, if they don't accept you, Jesus said, brush your bitches off and keep on moving. He's riding in, and they walk up, and I guess they started thinking, maybe this is the king. He raised up Lazarus from the dead. Maybe he is the king. We just went out there with palm branches and started waving palm branches, and it is Palm Sunday, so can I talk about the palm branches for a minute? They begin to wave the palm branches and throw them down as he began to ride into the town. Jesus is riding. He wasn't getting infatuated about none of it. Be careful how you let people blow you up. Keep on waving those palm branches and throwing them down there. And I, what I love about this is because I began to do a little study and I found out that palm branches were often given to gladiators, soldiers, People who know how to stay in the fight and keep on fighting. I don't know about you, but I don't ever want to stop fighting. I want to die fighting. I, I ain't going to let the enemy take nothing else from me. And if he does, he's going to pay for it. You got to get your indignation stirred back up. Say, devil, you come stealing from me, baby. You're going to pay for that and watch. Because I'm going to escalate. Every time you come to my house trying to get something from me, I'm just going to go higher. I'm going to be a more anointed. I'm going to be more favored. I'm going to be more blessed, more opportunity, more peace, more joy, more everything. And stuff. They would throw these palm branches down, and I found out that they would give these palm branches to gladiators. You know, those guys that would get down in the arenas and fight. And when they would get in these arenas, it was do or die. Have you ever been in a fight where it was do or die? If you didn't fight back, you was gonna die. 
I don't know about you, but I've been there where if I didn't fight back, I was going to die right where I was. Thank God for a fight down inside of you. you. If you got a fight down inside of you, you ought to thank God that I still got indignation, that I still can be angry just as long as I don't sin, and I still can put my dukes on, put my war paint on, march into the enemy's camp and get my stuff. You ought to be, you ought to be grateful for a good fight. Good and sometimes you need to get mad. That's the only thing standing between you and your breakthrough is you just taking it, you too passive, and you done let the devil trample all over your life. And now you done been through so much in your life that your expectation for a quality life has diminished. You can stay in trouble so long that it causes your expectation to diminish. Be careful that you don't grieve too long. Put an expiration date on it. Give it some time if you need to mourn over it, cry over it, whatever you got to do. But if sometimes you got to pull yourself up, square your shoulders, and fight back. If there's any fighters and survivors in the room, I wish you would holler at your boy right now and let me know I still got a fight down on the inside of me. I still got something to fight back with. I still got glory on my life. I know I've been through hell, but I still got favor. I still got glory. Somebody said, I got glory on my life. I got glory on my life. Got glory on my life. And they would give these palm branches to these that were fighters, champions, real athletes. I was looking at this and I began to think about how they was throwing those palm branches down for Jesus. And it didn't make sense to me because why would they give a palm branch to someone who had not come up on his greatest fight yet? Because he was six days out, right, Bishop? Six days out to the greatest fight that he had ever fought. The Lord spoke to me, he says, the palm branch is prophetic. They didn't even know that the palm branches that they were waving was indicative to the fact that he was going to win the next battle that he was about to go to. I don't know about you, but I want a palm branch in my life. Is there anybody want a palm branch in your life? I came to be a palm branch in your life today. I come prophetically to tell you that you're too high to live that low, that your greatest days are ahead of you. You ain't seen nothing yet. God is about to do the greatest work he's ever done. If you believe it, I need you to open up your your mouth and praise God for it right now. Let the devil know I got my victory. I'm going to keep on fighting. I won't ever give up. Give him 60 seconds of praise right there. Let the devil know I'm still alive. I still got a fight in me. Come on, somebody. Let the devil know he's been pushing you around and bullying you. I declare that you got victory in your life. Let the devil know I'm going to fight you to the day I die. You won't ever get my glory. You won't ever get my victory. As a matter of fact, just shout, I got victory in my sleep. When I'm sleeping, he's got me covered. When I'm out of it and incoherent, I still got victory. He's working on my behalf. Yes, he is. And so when you go over the description, First Kings, I love it so much because King Benadad. Sit down. We just talking. Give me a little bit more time. I didn't have time to deal with it in the first service, but King Benadad, he started harassing the king of Israel and said, we're coming down there to get your houses. We're going to get your wives. We're going to take your cheering. He said, we're coming to take care of this. We're coming to take you out. And the problem is, as I was talking about earlier, the problem is, is King Benadad had been sitting around with his boys filling his oats. He started telling them what he going to go down there and do. And so the elders got around. That's why you need real people in your life. You don't need no panty waist Christians in your life. You don't need, some, you need a ride or die who will get down in the ditches with you and fight with you. I don't need nobody that loves me just when I'm up. I need you to celebrate me when I'm down. Get down here and back your back up to me. Tell me you got my back. I don't need somebody who's wishy-washy in my life. 
got some stick abilities. He started talking, he started talking to him and he, he said, he said, we're going to take everything and, and, it, and he started harassing him in such a way that king of Israel started getting a little intimidated by it and the elders got around and they said, no, don't consent to this. He said, send him a message back and that's when he told King Abinadad, he said, why are you talking all that trash, boy? And you thinking all, you all that and you're going to come get my stuff. He said, watch out. He said, because just because you got your armor on don't give you a right to brag. I, I encourage the young people, y'all remember me encouraging you this morning. Let me encourage you, keep your war paint on. Keep your battle suit on until the end of the fight. He said, don't boast because you put your armor on because you ain't done nothing but pick a fight. I told, I told my, my grandfather, he used to tell me, he said, well, you get in a fight. If you get in a fight in school, he said, the ones you got to watch for is them quiet boys. All these pe people talking all this gibberish about what they are. Prove who you are. Show me who you are. You're going you gonna to harass me? Then come on and let's get this thing done then. You may walk over Cletus, but you're going to limp back. So Jesus, he still had his armor on. Oh, but early on Sunday morning, after a long weekend, early on Sunday morning, he got up. Somebody, I know it ain't Easter yet, but I'd like to just touch it just for a minute. I said, he got up. The devil thought he had him, but he got up. This is your season to get up. Can I just prophesy to you? This is your season to get up. Quit letting the devil beat your brains out. Get up and fight back. This is your, get up out of depression. Get up out of disappointment. Get up out of. When you translate that word boast, it literally means bragging rights. Jesus got up, and we got up. He pulled off his armor. Oh, my God, I feel like preaching now. I'm looking forward to the day when I can pull my armor off and get me some bragging rights. Is there, is there anybody in here that's got some bragging rights? You, you done been through enough hell in your life. You got something to say. That's why you are who you are right now is because you got some, because you fought through the fight and finally got your bragging rights. And they said that Jesus went up and sat down at the right hand of the Father. And he's ever making intercession for, ain't you glad that he got up so you can get up? High five, two or three people that say I'm getting up I've been down too long I've been through too much hell in my life I'm getting up it's, I'm tired of being down on my back it's my season to get up give God 30 seconds of praise if you know you got to get up in you I still got to come back in me shout I got to come back in me baby touch your neighbor and say I got to come back in me I know you think because I'm down right now that it's always going to be like this but I'm coming back with full strength with a fresh anointing it's my season it's over I'm fighting back to get my bragging rights look at somebody and say I'm fighting for my bragging rights I'm going to have something to say after this battle baby Everybody stand to your feet right now. I want to prophesy over you right now. Matter of fact, if you're going through hell and you're going to fight for your bragging rights, I want you to run up to these altars right now. I need all the people who's fighting for your life. You waiting on your bragging rights. Come on, step up in this altar. I want to lay my hands on you. I want to declare victory over your life. I declare right now that every weapon that's fit against you will not be able to prosper. I declare favor over your life. I declare blessings over your life. I declare blessings over your life. Receive blessings right now. Receive blessings. Receive blessings right now. I declare that it's over, sir. Your best days are ahead of you. 
everything that the enemy has put you through. God's going to give you double for your trouble. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. I declare favor over your life. Devil, I declare right now, loose my brother in the name of Jesus. I declare victory in your heart. Victory over drugs. Victory over alcohol. Victory over your past. I declare it is done. Somebody shout, it's done right now. It's done right now. It's done right now. It's done right. It's done right now. It's done right now. It's done right now. You got your bragging right, sir. I declare it right now. Come on, musicians. I need you to help me a little bit. I'm shifting now. Come on, lift up those hands and declare that right now. I'm coming out to. I'm coming out of depression. I'm coming out of discouragement. I'm coming into my destiny. I'm coming into my favor. Somebody begin to pray in the Holy Ghost right now. I feel victory in this house. It's revival time. Come on. It's time to raise up. Stand up and grab a hold of your victory. Pull down strongholds. Just reach up and pull down strongholds right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The name above all names. The name above all names. The name above all names. I said, Jesus. Shanda robo saka rama siti arabo shanda rama mashiki arabo shanda shanda robo bo shiki ya halabo bo shanda rama siki arabo bo shataya. In the name of Jesus, I declare victory over. Break every generational curse, every hex, every weapon that's been formed against you will not be able to prosper. In the name of Jesus, I declare victory over my sister. Devil, loose my sister. In the name of Jesus, raise up, sister. In the name of Jesus. You will get your joy back. You will get your joy back. This is your season to get your joy back. Fresh anointing. Fresh anointing in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I didn't go through hell for nothing. I didn't waste my pain. Everything I've been through, God's going to make it better for me in the name of Jesus. I declare victory over my brother in the name of Jesus. Victory over my brother in the name of Jesus. I speak victory over my brother in the name. Loose my brother. Every generational curse is broken in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Loose my brother in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus name. I plead the blood over you, brother. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare victory over you, my brother. Loose my brother from his past in the name of Jesus. Loose my brother in the name of Jesus. Loose my brother right now in the name of Jesus. I declare victory over you, my brother. In the name of Jesus. Touch God in Jesus' name. Touch God in Jesus' name. 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 In Jesus name. In Je Thank you for watching the Jonathan Desparty Gospel Channel. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and get your praise on. 